Adventures. Today, we're in the Ocala National Forest at Lake Delancey. In 1977, a young man by the name of Ronnie Van Zant, who was the lead singer of the band Leonard Skinner, came here and fulfilled one of the wishes he had before he died. Two things Ronnie Van Zant wanted before God took him from this earth. One was to catch a big black bass. The other was to own an old, old Chevrolet truck. And both of those came true right before Ronnie passed. In the end of July of 77, Ronnie bought his classic truck that he wanted. However, just before that in May, Ronnie Van Zant and his longtime friend and fishing buddy Gene Odom came here to Lake Delancey. Let's see if I can get y'all a better look. It's all wet here, so I can't go no farther. They came here just to enjoy the day together as friends and do some fishing. Because Ronnie was a simple man. Ronnie was a lot of what his songs talked about. They came here to this back side of this lake. Now, back then in 1977, this lake was all one. Now it's two parts due to a, a big gator that, that created a sinkhole. And, uh, and it split the lake. There's, there's a little channel you can get across here to this one. But as you see, hardly nobody does. The other side of the lake is nice and clear. But this was the side of the lake that Ronnie was on when he caught that big bass. That bass was 12 pounds. Sadly for Ronnie, he got it back about two weeks before he passed from the taxidermy and, and had it hanging up in his house. But this is that lake that in 1977, the legend rock star Ronnie Van Zant caught that big bass. Just to show you the kind of guy Ronnie really was, had all that fame, all that fortune, all that success, and the only two things he actually wanted out of life was catching a big bass and having an old truck. Uh, and to me, that speaks volumes on the type of person Ronnie was and what he was about. Where his morals and everything actually laid. And uh, I, I never got the chance to meet Ronnie. I was born in 73, so I would have been a little, little kid. But I know a lot of the, the people that had... And uh, Gene Odom, and Ronnie was a hell of a guy, but he who, he was who he was. And, and that's what we all have to be. We can't let anything change us. And, and uh, as I said before, you know, if, you know, buying all the bells and whistles and all the big fancy stuff makes you who you are, then it's just not really worth much. And Ronnie wasn't that way. They stayed living there in this, his home in Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, he, he lived over off Doctor's Lake, which was a nice place. But by no means, you know, the multi-million dollar mansions that you see all these celebrities in today. Because Ronnie was just an old country boy. But this is the lake. Let me see if I can get y'all out there a little bit farther. Let me zoom the selfie stick thing in. This is the lake he caught that bass on in May of 77. Sadly, just a few short months later, he'd perish in that plane crash. Just a little of the history the Ocala National Forest has to offer. A lot of people don't know about I'm a big Leonard Skinner fan. I actually own Ronnie Van Zant's uh, fishing fishing reel. Um, now it's not the one that he he caught this big bass on. He was actually buried with that. It is one back in the '60s. I think he was 11 or 12 years old. He got it for his birthday, and um, later on wound up trading it to somebody for some stuff. And later on in years, me being the fan I was, and I actually owned a bait shop. I, uh, I put some of the Leonard Skinner history from here 
in my bait shop because it was just right up the road. And uh, in doing so, I had people coming from all over to see all of this stuff. And, and one of the things I was able to acquire was that fishing pole. And um, I, I'm proud to, to have that. And uh, I'll actually do a video later on on that so you guys can see it and tell you all the details behind it and the stories and the, the documentation with it and all of that. But you guys, Lake Delancey. As I said, we're here in the middle of the Ocala National Forest. We have 387,000 acres of forest. Um, and stories throughout them. So you guys stay tuned. We got some more stuff planned. I'm going to actually take you guys back out here another day and take you to the spot to where in 1955, Elvis Presley came to the Ocala Livestock Pavilion and met a couple of old boys that he he took a liking to and they brought him out here rattlesnake hunting the very next day and um he killed a, a rattlesnake that was over seven foot long and there was a bait and tackle shop here just up the road from where it all happened that actually has that picture or had for a long time of of out elva standing there with a rattlesnake over his shoulder so a lot of plans a lot of fun and again, you guys, I don't edit any videos. I don't know how. I use a Chromebook and a GoPro. And um, I, I don't know how to edit it. So y'all bear with me. And then I hope you, if anything else, this, you know, gives you a reason to smile or something. Maybe you want to come see with your families and create your own memories. And with that, you guys, we're going to leave beautiful Lake Delancey with the rock and roll history of Ronnie Van Zant and his big bass. And... Uh, We'll see you guys on the next one. Everybody have a good day.